Hello everyone, CST 110, Miss Owens. Okay, so class is canceled, but we still have to move on with what we need to do. So I am going to do a brief lecture on chapters 5 and 6, starting with chapter 5. And I apologize for the lighting. I'm afraid my house isn't equipped with a lot of lights because I tend to like it darker. Um, so please bear with me. And I am using the PowerPoints that are on the website if you go to the course blackboard site and course documents under the principles of communication you will see the powerpoints of chapter five and six that i am using to give this quick lecture um, because like i said we need to make up we cannot afford to miss time here this is our second class so chapter five starting with the importance of listening listening and responding uh, a lot of people think they know what listening is, they think, oh, they're good listeners, but the reality is that a lot of times we don't listen as well as we should. Um, and it is an important skill to have. Um, maybe some people you, you've you heard people maybe have told you, oh, you're such a good listener, okay? Either you're feigning <laughs> that you care, or you really are listening and actually um, giving them some help, and if so, kudos to you. Um, so here are some basic um, why it's important, our relationships. I mean, how many times have you had friends or if you're in a relationship, especially the woman say, you never listen to me. Um, it is important. It keeps our relationships going. We need to hear what they have to say in order to keep that relationship strong. Um, we collaborate with others if you're at work. Um, meetings and such or just working with other colleagues it's very important that you listen and i'm sure we all have that coworker who tends to dominate the conversation they never actually stop and listen to what other people have to say and if you've been in that case so you will realize how important listening is sometimes you need to be quiet and just listen um, listening also links the speaker and the audience the speaker like right now you all are listening to me and I'm sorry this is not practiced or rehearsed so and I don't have you to give feedback as we would do in class so I'm sorry this is not going to be as perfect as it should be um, so listening is definitely very important okay and we get to the next um, how we listen um, listening a lot of people think it's easy oh you just listen but have to remember listening uh, hearing is a physical ability we can hear all kinds of things around us but do we actually pay attention to them a lot of times no there are things we hear if you live in a city you get used to hearing cars outside sirens and all you get to the point where you don't actually hear them anymore because you're not listening for them you kind of just you're so used to them listening is an active so hearing is passive it's something we do without even working at it is just there but listening is active this is where you're listening you're hearing things and you're trying to understand those messages especially if it involves communication if we select the things that are important to us I think we I think it was this class we talked about um, when we're like when I'm in a store I tend to hear kids voices saying mommy I'm so used to watching out for kids and all so we select the things that we want to hear that we want to listen to and when speaking with someone else we're going to select the ideas concepts that are important to us that we relate to this is especially in a speech um, so it's something that we have to open ourselves up to maybe listening for things that maybe we wouldn't select um, attending this is are we actually really paying attention to what we're listening to are we hearing the words really understanding and that gets into understanding understanding what's being said um, and then remembering are we remembering enough sometimes when we're listening to someone we want to jump in and ask questions well the part of the remembering is you let the person finish you keep listening remembering okay I want to ask about this and then you go back and during your responding, then you would ask them questions about things that they said, um, kind of paraphrasing, restating what you think you heard to ensure that there's a true understanding going on. So those all work together and are something that we have to do, we can work on to get better at. So that's a good thing. Listening can be improved. It's an important part of communication. Um, listening styles. We have the relational listening style. Um, talking to family to children your friends you listen in a way that it's important to the relationship 
Now at work, we tend to listen a little bit, maybe more analytical, critical, um, task oriented. And that is where we have work to do. We have a project to work on. Um, our boss wants us to do something. So we're analyzing, thinking about what's going on and maybe thinking about what we need to do task oriented. Now, if this is a boss and employee, the relational style there might be if you feel that your boss doesn't appreciate you, you may be throwing in a little bit of that relational, um, he doesn't trust me or something. Um, but ideally, these are different styles. You may, if you're listening to someone for a relationship, you may be using some analytical and critical thinking as well because maybe you're trying to solve a problem within the relationship. Um, and then using listening styles. Um, the whole point here is you're enhancing your self-awareness. It is an important part of learning about ourselves. How well do we listen? Are we really hearing what people are saying? Are we hearing what we want to hear? And how many times have we had that with friends? They jump on the things that are minor and not the whole big issue of what we're saying. Um, we have to adapt to di different listening situations. Maybe you know you're speaking to someone or listening to someone who doesn't speak English as a first language. So you have to consider that maybe they're using words in a wrong way and um, be a little bit more open to trying to really understand them. Maybe you're in a situation where there's a lot of noise around you. Um, I raised four kids. Goodness knows there are plenty of times that, you know, there's craziness going on while one of them was trying to tell me something. School. And I'm in a classroom with 13-year-olds constantly talking and doing other things, trying to get them to be quiet. Um, so I would have to adapt to hearing maybe what another student was saying while well, I try to get the class to quiet down. Um, and then you have to adapt your own message. Um, maybe they're not hearing you or um, maybe you're not hearing properly, so you need to maybe adjust how you're saying things to make sure that whoever you're speaking to is understanding what you're saying and then you can listen and hear what they're saying better. So all of that, again, goes together and makes you a better listener. Um, there are some barriers to listening, and some of these we put on ourselves, our self-barriers. Um, we have a self-focus. Again, we're egocentric. We're, it's all about us, okay? Um, maybe we're focused more on how something is going to relate to us instead of the whole issue or how it might affect other people. Um, emotional noise, and this is where maybe we have a headache or maybe if we don't like the person, or maybe we love the person so much and we're so eager to jump on things that we're not really listening. And criticism. Um, Maybe we're criticizing the, the speaker, maybe there are other things going on that somehow um, we're criticizing either the speaker or the message, um, something is going on that we're not really hearing the message properly. We also have information processing barriers. Um, some people, I'm a visual person, so if someone is reading something to me, my listening, it's harder. I need to see it. Don't, don't just read it to me. Let me hold it in my hands and read it. Um, so our audio processing rate, maybe we hear things, um, our hearing is not as great, or just the whole processing what we're hearing is a little bit different. Information overload, how many times has someone unloaded to us and our mind just explodes with all the information and we can't handle it all at once and we're trying to, to hear different things and so it's information overload, TMI, too much information. Um, receiver apprehension, maybe we're nervous. Maybe we're either nervous about who we are or nervous about the person there. Um, our shifting attention, goodness knows we're always, our minds are going on about a test tomorrow, what we're going to cook for dinner tomorrow. Um, so we're kind of not quite paying attention to the full message ourselves. And then, of course, we have the cultural differences, which is not just people from other countries. We have the, the age difference, the gender difference, the religious. There are so many different parts of culture that goes there, athletes versus academic people. I mean, that's a whole different thing as well. And then we have our context barriers. Um, we have barriers of time. Um, what's happening at the time? When did this happen? And then barriers of place. Where are we? What's going on? That maybe it's not the best time or best place or time to be talking about such an issue. And then improving your listening skills. And this, I think nowadays with technology, is getting to be a really big problem. Everyone has the cell phone. We're always looking. So we're constantly competing with people's cell phones, it seems like. Um, they hear a little notification going off and you instantly, which is one reason I try and tell people, turn off your cell phone in class, turn it over so you can't see that little beeping light letting you know, I got a message. 
Um, so we need to turn off competing messages. Either we have, like with me with kids, um, raising four kids, and one of my students need, or one of my children needed to talk to me, the others were really clamoring. I would have to do something to make sure that the kids knew that I would get to them. This is this is their siblings' turn first. Um, listen with your eyes, and why our eyes? Because again, we get to the nonverbals here. Sometimes the message is not just what in the words, but what do we talk about? Nonverbal. Okay, look at their face, look at their expressions, look at their body language. How are they? How are they looking as they're talking to you? That's very telling, and it's very important that we pay attention to those nonverbals. Sometimes the nonverbals and the verbals don't match because they're hiding. They don't want to face something. They don't want to talk about it or something, and you have to be aware of that. And then listening. Understand both the details and the major ideas. Don't get so wrapped in either the big details that you don't hear the little details or you get so wrapped in all the little details, but that really those are just little things not as important as the big ideas going on. So th these are things we can all work on that we can improve our listening, and it's very important that we be aware of that. Responding skills. When you are responding to someone, you've listened to them. And this is part of where the understanding, remembering, and attending all comes to. Now you want to paraphrase. You want to be descriptive. You want to somehow um, fill in more details about what they said, showing that you did hear everything they said. You're being descriptive. You're being timely. You're answering within a proper time, not waiting, unless you let them know, I need to think about this. Give me some time. And then you, you let them know you'll get back to them later. Be brief. Don't get on and on and on that they're now zoning out and be useful don't simply repeat things state either I don't know how to help you or here's some of my ideas um, but be useful they told you something for a reason you want to make sure that you're feeling a purpose as you respond to them and responding with empathy um, empathy sympathy people confuse them sympathy is when you actually feel you feel badly for someone but you can't really understand how they feel Empathy is when you can put yourself in their place and you can imagine, if this was me, how would I feel? Um, so it's important to know when to speak and when to be silent. There are times that maybe all they want is for you to listen. They don't need you to respond. Maybe all they need is you say, oh, that's really sad, and then give them a hug or hold their hand. Um, and then there may be times that they do need you to speak. So and this is where sometimes if you're not sure, you can ask them, what do you need from me? What do you want? And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, understanding the other person's feelings. Maybe this is not something you can really relate to, but um, you can try and put yourself in their place. If you had a dog and there's something wrong with your dog, you don't have pets, pets mean nothing, but maybe understand this is like a friend. So how would you feel if this is a friend? A dog is their friend. Um, ask appropriate questions. Make sure you're staying on topic and not all over the place asking weird off-the-wall questions. Make sure they are appropriate to the message they just gave you. And then paraphrase the message content. What I understood you to say is, so if I understood you, what you're feeling, okay, those are ways that you can paraphrase and restate what they said, especially if you're not sure that you're really getting the entire message. And then paraphrase their emotions. Okay, so it sounds like maybe you're really sad or it sounds like you're really angry. Okay, let them know that you think and make sure you're understanding exactly what they said and how they're feeling about it. Um, in the textbook, and this is accurate according to this new textbook, um, pages 116 and 117, um, they give um, ways to provide social support. And again, this is very important. There are times that even a private person may feel the need to have other people supporting. We all were social beings. There are times we need to know that just to have our feelings validated. Okay, A lot of times we think we're the only person in the world who feels this way. Um, so this is one reason why we may speak to people. We want to know that we're not the only one who feels this way. And that's an important thing. Okay, um, Chapter 6 will be next. So give me a minute and I will get that one. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pause this. And chapter six gets into cultural diversity, something very important nowadays. Um, our whole world has become global. We're speaking to people all across the world. We're working with people who are very different. So it's under, it's important to understand 
diversity, the idea of people being different. And there are many different ways for having diversity. It used to be way back before the 70s, women were at home, men were in the work field, and we didn't have all this ability to be quite as global as we do now, so more than likely you would be working with people who were more like you in different ways, age, gender, culture, and all of that. Nowadays, it's all different. There are so many different ways that we interact with other people. And all of these can cause misunderstandings and problems. So it's important that we are tolerant of people who are different um, and really try to see the other side and understand them. So ways that we have diversity. We have sex and gender. Um, and androgynous is when we have both masculine and feminine um, characteristics. And this can be a man or a woman. Maybe you happen to have both tendencies and that happens. Um, and don't assume because someone is a male or someone is a female that they have certain um, habits. We tend to think of women as being the caretakers and nurturers and men have to be manly and masculine and tough and strong. And nowadays that, that's, that, that's not there. Okay. And we may see it. Um, those of you, your grandparents, you might see it with your grandfathers. Maybe your, my daddy, he, he's in a time when men didn't give hugs to their kids. Um, his way of showing us he loved us was throwing us around, um, roughhousing with us, um, taking us wherever he went. But to say I love you was very hard for him. Nowadays, I see it with my son-in-law. He is very, always tells his kids, I love you, hugs them, kisses them. It's really cool that men are getting to show a softer side to them now. So we have to be careful, especially if we're an older generation, that we're not assuming these gender roles um, because even the older people are starting to change but as they're realizing they don't have to keep to those traditional roles. Um, and plus, everyone's different. I mean, just because someone's an older male doesn't mean that they're going to be, you know, more less likely to show um, affection at all. So you can't assume that. Um, sexual orientation. And this has to do with what you, what you favor, male or female. Um, homophobia is where we're, we have this fear of being labeled as a gay or a lesbian. Nowadays, it's getting more accepted that people are different, that they have different um, orientations, and it's being more accepted. My day growing up, this is a big thing, um, and it's sad because there are a lot of people. I mean, we hear in the news of people have been beaten up because someone thought they were gay, and that's sad. We should never, never attack someone just because of their differences, and this is part of why understanding diversity is very important in our communications with other people. Age, okay, age is a big thing. We have our older, we have the younger. I'm older, I'm 53 almost, but... I can relate to a lot of younger people because I'm a teacher. I'm, I'm so used to working with younger people that I actually have a harder time being around people. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> people my age. Um, <coughs> so it's important that we don't assume because someone is older they can't learn or because someone is younger they can't do. Or, and this is something we see a lot um, in stores. Um, Stores, restaurants, if a group of young people come in, suddenly they're watching them, afraid they're going to steal or do something. And those might be the nicest kids ever. So we have to be very careful that we don't assume because of someone's age that they have different tendencies. And then ethnicity. Okay, and ethnicity, you can be... Um, I have a student in Texas. He was, let's see, his family was Pakistani. But he grew up in Italy, so his ethnicity, even though his race was Pakistani, his ethnicity was Italian. And then he moved to the United States and definitely started becoming more an American boy. Um, so ethnicity has more to do with the culture based on is not has to do, it does not have to do with race. Um, race has to do with genetics. Okay, where ethnicity is more where you are raised, the kind of groups that you are um, around. And then we get to culture and communication. Okay, so diversity, understanding that people are different and being aware of that is important. And now we get to communication and culture. Um, culture has to do with shared values and beliefs within a group of people. Okay, and it's important that we're tolerant of those who are different, especially nowadays because you never know. You may end up working with people who are from around the world. In, uh, my daughter, okay, she's down in Miami. 
fluent in Spanish. She's very used to the American way, but yet the Hispanic Latino way as well because a lot of the people she works with. And then she was sent to Germany to train the people over there. Another whole culture, another language, which she didn't know. Um, luckily, they, of course, knew English, um, I believe, or she had a translator. I can't remember how it worked. But here she was, an American girl, um, bilingual with Spanish, and suddenly she's in Germany teaching these German people how to follow the regulations and policies needed in making these uh, metal, um, medical equipment that her company builds. So um, you never know when you may end up working with people entirely different from you. Um, we're called the global village now because the Internet, we can see what's happening around the world as in the same instant that it's happening. Uh, we, it's globalization okay we are now dealing like a small village everyone's different but we're working together more so this is where it's especially important to be tolerant of different cultures and understanding maybe we don't agree with them but we have to accept that's how they do things and the problem is that a lot of times because people do something different we think it's bad and we judge them and, and that's not right we need to get out of that so, as I said earlier, defining culture, um, it's a learned system of knowledge, beliefs, behavior, attitudes, values, and norms. It has to be shared and agreed upon by the group, and it's always passed on to the next generation. Now, does that mean that everything stays the same through the generations? No. Each generation will probably change things a lot more. When I was younger, um, seeing different things, I, I can see a lot of changes that thankfully are changing for the better. Um, co-culture, a co-culture would be a smaller group within a large group, and this is where we have all these different ethnicities, races, people coming from other countries, um, settling down here and becoming part of the group. Now, it's, again, it doesn't have to do just with race and countries. If you look at a school, schools have their own culture, and within that school culture, we have co-cultures, we have the athletes, we have the um, performing arts students, the artists, we have the, what we used to call the nerds, the academic people who are more academically inclined. So even in something as simple as a school setting, you're going to have co-cultures, smaller groups within the large group. Um, intercultural communication, inter means between, so intercultural communication would be communicating between different cultures. Culture shock, and this is something that if you ever go to another country, you're going to be confused, you'll be in shock, you won't know how to react, you'll be afraid to maybe interact with people because everything is so different and your self-confidence kind of goes away because you're not sure what to do. Maybe you try to communicate with people, you're rebuffed, and you realize you're saying things the wrong way, doing things wrong. And slowly you start to be comfortable and you make it. and then. If you've been gone a long time, maybe for a few months or a year, you get used to that new culture, well, then you come back to your old culture, and then we have what we call reverse culture shock, which is where you've adjusted to a new culture, and coming back to the old culture, you're kind of out of whack, and you're not quite sure what to do again because you've learned other ways. And that's something um, people who travel a lot might be familiar with and you, you adjust, you get used to. Um, having an acceptance region where you're knowledgeable and realize that you have, that cultures are different will make it easier. People who um, are uncomfortable with different cultures or really have a hard time with culture shock and they may not be able to adapt and they need to learn, leave that new culture. So being open and tolerant will make that culture shock less um, difficult to deal with. And then we have a worldview. And this is our cultural perspective that influences how we perceive and respond to what happens to us. We all have the idea. Uh, we see it in the news and with, um, especially right now with the Middle East. A lot of people feel bad for Middle Eastern women. They're so oppressed. They're so suppressed. Um, they have to cover up and all this, which unfortunately is true. There are areas that are like that. Um, so we look at them and feel bad for them, for these women, where some of those women look at us and how men treat us and here in America, and they feel bad for us because they feel that we're not protected, that men abuse us and take advantage of us. Um, so the worldview, this is, everyone has their own worldview, and everyone has their idea of how the world works and how it should be. And each culture is going to think that, 
obviously their culture is better, we have a better way of doing things. But once we learn other cultures and understand why they do it that way, our worldview gets where maybe we can understand. Maybe we don't approve. Maybe we think our culture is still better, but we at least learn to understand and accept why they do things. And this is what helps a lot to get rid of racism and hatred for others as well. So these are some of the ideas of how communication culture work. We also have cultural contexts. Um, Different cultures have different ways with how they handle things. Um, high context cultures, nonverbal cues are important. Um, this is you get to the Asian, the Middle Eastern, Southern European cultures, South America. Um, and here, if someone asks you um, if you would like seconds, you don't say yes right away. Okay, you say no. You be polite. Oh no, no. Um, and then they have to keep asking. And then you finally say yes, okay, because you don't want to appear too much of a hurry to accept or too greedy, maybe. Okay, so that's a high context where it's important to, I guess you could say what we would say, kind of play a little game or something. Low context cultures are more explicit, okay. Our verbal message is going to be exactly how we say it. So here in the United States, if someone asks you if you want seconds, you say no, they're going to say okay, and they go on. And meanwhile, that person, the other culture, the high context culture is left like, oh, that was rude, okay. Um, when I taught at the Islamic school, I had to warn the students, okay, if I go to your house, I'm more than likely to say no and mean it or I'm going to say yes um, because I wasn't quite sure how to do it, but I warned them, you're in the United States now. If you ask me something, I'm going to say yes or no and mean it. You know, I'm not going to wait for you to ask me a second time. Um, so it's important that these cultures understand each other if you're dealing with people from other cultures. Um, it's important that you understand and maybe state out from the beginning, okay, this is how I am, this is my culture, this is what I'm likely to do, so please, you know, don't feel insulted or whatever. Um, I made it very interesting getting used to that idea. Um, Cultural values, okay, value is the worth we put on something, okay, so what do cultures think are important? Um, in an individualistic culture versus a collectivist culture, the United States is definitely individualistic. Um, we um, honor the I'm the best um, individuals, we always have the most valuable player, um, we have first prize going to whoever did the best. And we may, if we have plans, we're not going to worry so much about how it impacts the family because we're going to do what's best for us. And in a collectivist culture, it's all about the group. And if something is going to upset the family, even if the individual really wants it, they're not going to upset the group in order to reach their goals. And this might be something that's hard for um, U.S. citizens who are very individualistic. So it can be very hard for us to understand why these um, other cultures, they won't do something they want because of how it'll impact the family. So again, it comes down to respecting the differences. Um, we have a decentralized versus centralized approach to power and cultural values. The United States were more decentralized. Our government, we have the president, but the president does not have total power. We have the House, we have the Senate, um, Congress. We have all these judicial branches of government that kind of have to work together. And then even within that, then we have our state governments in our city and our county. Um, even in jobs, we have the boss, but then we have sub, um, supervisors, other managers below. So the power is shared by many. Where a centralized government, you have one person who has all the power. Um, and they may have a couple other people to help, but basically what they say goes. And again, this can come down to... We as a country don't understand why some countries do things. Well, because if they have a centralized power, they're not going to argue with the person who has the authority. Where we, we know we can vote people out, we can argue, we can fight and go against. So that causes misunderstandings as well. And then we have the uncertainty and certainty um, with cultural values. And I'm sorry, I did not check on that one enough to double check. Um, I'm sorry, I should have been more prepared. Um, certainty, uncertainty is the idea of not being sure of what you're doing, um, what's going on. And then certainty is when you have confidence and you know what to expect. Um, some cultures can handle the uncertainty better. Other cultures 
can't okay and that's going to cause a problem too where maybe you can go through with something not knowing for sure what's going on and then we have the masculine and feminine cultural values this is the idea that um, masculine the idea of being tough strong um, powerful and some cultures it's all about maintaining that power um, it has nothing to do with the male and female. It's more how you handle things. And then you have some feminine cultures where you value the idea of nurturing. And I would say that an individualistic type culture such as ours probably values more the masculine type um, values where um, the collectivist cultures are going to value the feminine culture type more, the idea of nurturing, looking out for others, um, being a little bit more affectionate and such is a little bit more accepted. And then we have the long-term and short-term time orientation. Some cultures value planning long-term, being prepared for the long-term. Um, time is very important. And then you have the short-term time orientation where you go for the moment. Whatever is working now is the best. We don't really worry about long-term value so much. And this can cause a real problem, especially if you're um, businesses from different countries where maybe your country things are more long term you look down the road look at what's going to happen later where a short term type culture you're trying to do business with them they're like oh, don't worry about it we'll worry about that later and this can cause problems especially um, working in business so these are things again you want to understand it's not that anyone is better I think sometimes a lot of these getting into that median where something in the middle would probably be best but it's important that we understand these ideas and concepts and we don't have to agree with them, but we have to understand and accept them and, make, and realize that this is going to be a part of dealing with communication with those types of cultures. What are some barriers to bridging differences and adapting to others? Okay, a lot of times, again, we get to where well, we don't understand why another culture does something, and this gets into what we call ethnocentrism. And ethno has to do with the idea of ethnic um, centrism, the idea of center. We believe that our ethnicity, our culture is better, and so we tend to get a little superior. Oh, they don't know anything. They're still living in the Middle Ages. And, you know, a lot of times you'll find that things around the world, um, it seems like the Western part of the world, um, Europe, the United States, South and North America, we're a little bit more. I guess ahead of areas in the Middle East, Asia, um, Africa, they're behind us maybe 40, 50, 60 years. They're still, it's not that we haven't gone through what they're going through now. We forget that we've gone through a lot of those problems as well. We're just a few generations ahead of them. So it's important that we don't think we're better, we're superior because we do things this way. They're still catching up to things, and we've gone through most of the problems that they're still dealing with now, and I think that's something that we as Americans forget. Um, assuming similarity. Okay, it's one thing you, you don't want to ignore differences, and you want to look at how you're similar, but you don't want to assume that you're similar enough that the differences don't matter. And then again, assuming differences. Yes, they're different. And you want to focus on the similarities again, but you need to find a happy median between acknowledging the similarities, acknowledging the differences, and then finding ways to work through them. Otherwise, we're not going to learn to adapt. And then stereotyping and prejudice, again, all of the above. Um, stereotyping, we classify people, we assume because they're part of a group that they must have these qualities, which leads to prejudice, which can lead to discrimination and racism, which is half the time what happens but by learning about other groups understanding and accepting that they're different we can take away the stereotyping and prejudice adapting to others who are different from you how can we adapt well intercultural communication competence the idea of the diversity understanding that people are different um, understanding a little bit why people do things the way they do seek information research if you know you're going to be going working with people who are different from other cultures, research, learn about those cultures. Now, again, you don't want to jump in. Oh, yeah, I know your people do this. But at least 
by having that information, it will help you understand when they do something that to you seems foreign. Um, ask questions and listen. Don't be afraid to ask them. Again, politely, you don't want to sit there and be rude and all, but, um, you know, ask questions and listen to what they say. Um, I had a friend at school. She's a Muslim, and she wears the hijab. And I thought it was interesting. She, Her viewpoint, because we American women are like, oh, my God, they have to cover. That's so rude. They're being made. No, a lot of them are not being made to cover. They prefer it. And her reasoning was that, why would I want to show my best to other men? I want my best to be for my husband only. And I thought that was kind of cool. So by asking questions, listening, I learned something, which I had already working with a lot of Muslims understood that it was all about not showing other men the best and kind of being modest. But I like that she wore it because she wanted to look her best for her husband only. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, tolerate ambiguity, ambiguity. There are going to be times that things don't quite make sense. Maybe they seem like, okay, they're going this way, they're going that way. Maybe times that you can't totally understand it and you're just going to have to tolerate it, adapt to it, adjust to it, and move on. Develop mindfulness. Be aware of what you're saying. Be aware of your prejudices, your other thoughts. And if you're seeking information, you're researching, you're asking questions, that helps with the mindfulness because then you're aware, okay, they do things differently. I need to be aware that I tend to jump to conclusions. Okay, be aware of yourself. Become other-oriented. Realize that other people have different ways of doing things. Understanding, learning about them might be interesting. And, again, it makes you a little bit more mindful again. And then ethically adapt to others. Okay, as long as you're not doing anything wrong, um, don't be hurting their feelings, insulting them. Uh, make sure you're somehow adapting in a way that makes everyone feel comfortable, okay? And that, that's a very important part of intercultural communication is adjusting and adapting as things come up, as differences come up, find ways that you can be aware. And there is so much out there. Um, I've had the privilege of working with people from all over the world, and I think it's sad that there are people who don't understand there's a really beautiful, colorful world out there. And by learning about other cultures, we actually learn more about ourselves as well. And that can be a fun thing and a great thing. So please, um, I do need you to, after you watch this video, I want you to please post on the discussion board or reply to me your thoughts. Argue with me if you want to. Um, but this will count as your attendance points for today um, by watching and then making an observation of something we've talked about and the powerpoints hopefully you've been able to go through them as you listen to me and i went a little over 37 minutes but thank you um look forward to seeing you next week we will meet at the library downstairs um, the first floor where they have the computers where the tutoring room is we'll meet there next week take care Bye bye